I'm going to look at the practicalities of towing this trailer with this Tesla Model X. And the Tesla Model X is very geared up for towing because as you can see, it's got a tow bar um, fitting already at the back with all the electrics for the plug. The, this tow bar hook, uh, the actual um, hitch comes with the car. You plug it in and then lock it in. It's very good and it, it's all really easy. You can fit the tow bar in about two minutes. You just have to drop down a little flap and plug the tow bar in. So let's take a look at the spec of the car. Um, it's a 100 kilowatt hour battery, but the claim is that 95 kilowatt hours are usable. It's uh, stating a real range of 275 miles based on 345 uh, watt hours per mile. Um, it shows when it's fully charged uh, under normal circumstances, it shows about 320, I think, uh, miles range. I would say 275 is fairly realistic as long as you drive it reasonably, um, you know, a reasonable level and don't thrash it. Um, I would say 345 is, is about what you would get uh, normally. Um, the other thing I wanted to look at, well, a couple of things to point out. Total torque is a massive 557 pound foot. I'm not sure what that is in Newton meters, but um, judging by what I've seen of, you know, various American car um, videos, that's pretty high and um, 535 horsepower. Probably the things that are most uh, important to us are the towing capacity. So if we keep going down here, you can see that for a braked trailer, the towing capacity is 2250 kilos. Although this is at odds with the user manual, um, uh, which says for non-plaid um, models, which mine is, uh, the towing capacity is 2300 with a maximum tongue weight of 100. But all external sites you look at um, that are all the Tesla pages that, that are on Tesla sites quote these figures. All of the external pages quote 2250 and a maximum tongue weight of 90 kilos, which as you can see seems to only apply to the plaid models. The final place to check is the plate on the side of the car. So you can see it here. It's not in the normal European standard layout, apparently. Um, but I take it that if we take the 5290 figure and take off 3040, we get 2250. So I'm assuming that that is the capacity, but it's not straightforward by any means. OK, so let's consider the capacity versus what I'm likely to put in the car. Um, so the maximum towing capacity is 2250. The unladen trailer weight is 980. That leaves us a balance of 1270. And then you can see the other things. So my car weighs uh, around 1135 dry. I think it might be slow, slightly lower than that, completely dry. Um, I usually fuel it to three quarters full or thereabouts. So let's say 40 litres. It's a BMW 1 Series, so uh, it's got a capacity of 55 litres, I think, the tank. So I'll fuel it to about 40 and then I'll carry about 40 litres with me. Um, if we say um, 0.75 kilos per litre, um, you can see that gives us those figures. Then I carry um, four spare wheels on a wheel rack. Um, that's another 72 kilos. So you can see it comes down really tight and I can just about squeak in there. Now I think in reality I've probably got a little bit of leeway in here, but um, it is pretty tight. Um, and what that does mean is if you're looking at a car that weighs more than 1135 kilos, um, you know, or 1100 kilos, then you need to carefully consider whether this is the right solution for you. I don't know how the weight of my trailer, which is a covered trailer, compares to an open trailer. Uh, I imagine an open trailer would be lighter, so that would give you some more leeway. Um, and maybe that would be more attractive. 
The other things I tend to take is I take a crate of fluids, um, you know, oil and, um, uh, and not antifreeze, coolant and, you know, all those sorts of things. Um, so uh, that comes to about 20 kilos. I've allowed 100 kilos for um, tools. That's probably a bit generous. I don't always take tools to the track because I do have a, have a sort of support arrangement with um, 4040 Racing. Um, so sometimes I take tools, sometimes I don't. Then I've got things like race wear and my computer and everything. But anyway, I throw all this in the car and uh, I'm traveling on my own. Um, this is all well within the total. I can't remember what the correct term of it is, but the total ca capacity of the car plus the trailer. Um, so, um, but it does mean I, I would prefer to carry the crate of fu fluids in the in the trailer, quite honestly. Um, but I can't do that to give myself a bit more leeway. And I'm, what I'm planning to do is have the trailer loaded trailer weighed on a way bridge. One thing I could do is move one of the spare wheels into the car or even two of the spare wheels into the car. I've got the space to do it. So uh, I could do that. Um, but again, I just I would prefer it all to be in the trailer. So you can see that it as a as I said earlier, it's quite a close run thing. Now, the other thing is there is a maximum tongue weight, which is either 90 or 100, depending on which figure you go with. But let's go with the 90 figure. And there's a minimum tongue weight, which is 4% of the total load in the trailer, which is all of this lot. And that comes to 51 kilos. Um, I think the minimum tongue weight is needed so that you don't get um, sway. I think that's the purpose. You need some weight over the tow hitch. I am particularly careful with the tow hitch weight because everybody, every time I turn up to a race, somebody says to me, I thought that uh, towing with a t Tesla results in you pulling the back out of the car. Um, I've had that said to me on several occasions now, and I have seen some pictures of it. And that sort of worried me a bit. So uh, I tend to uh, weigh the tongue weight in fact what i do is i use some bathroom scales and i lower uh, I, I jack the trailer up at the front with a trolley jack and then i lower the jockey wheel onto the bathroom scales and take the weight and then do a multiplication to work out what the weight is at the uh, tow hitch which is obviously less than it would be at the jockey wheel because the jockey wheel is closer to the uh, the fulcrum point so um yeah it's a bit of a palaver but i guess if you're you're going to pack the thing the same way every time then you only need to do it once there's one final point i need to cover here relating to a uh, load of the trailer i went on a bit of a wild goose chase um thinking that i needed to get my trailer what's called downplated um but uh, and this is where the uh the gross weight of the trailer is 3,000 kilos, but the maximum towable weight, uh, according to the car, is 2,250. And someone suggested to me that those numbers needed to match. Now, it turns out that's not at all true. And I had to, I actually submitted a downplating request and it was rejected and they gave me um, this explanation. So you don't need to downplay any trailer that doesn't have powered braking. Apparently I, I had another email with further clarification here. So if it doesn't have hydraulic, uh, sorry, if it doesn't have air brakes, electric brakes or something like that, you don't need to downrate the trailer. Um, so uh, that has gone away and uh, I'm, I'm free to use it. But as it says uh, down here in this email, um, provided the actual weight of the vehicle trailer and loads does not exceed the train weight. Okay, so that's the only rule. I'm going to come on to uh, the practicalities of charging on the way to the circuit and um, particular practicalities that relate to the Tesla Model X. But before we do that, let's just touch on charging at the circuit. Uh, the MSV circuits in the UK have introduced this uh, fair usage policy. Um, now, I'm, I fully appreciate this won't apply to everyone, uh, particularly if you're outside the UK, but it's worth seeing if you have something similar at the circuits you visit. Um, you can see here that 
uh, it says electric vehicles um, 50 pounds per day which is extremely expensive in particular because in most of the garages that I went to um, there's only an ordinary single phase mains outlet um, you know 250 volts or whatever and so uh, charging is going to be particularly slow some of the garages do have three phase and if you have a three phase adapter maybe you can use that um, I do now have a three phase adapter but I haven't had the chance to try it in any of the garages I did try um, 30 amp outlets at Silverstone and they didn't work um, so uh, just bear that in mind Silverstone is an exception here because I saw chargers behind the wing building in Silverstone uh, in September although they weren't working at that time but I imagine they are now and these chargers in this pi uh, picture seem to be in the paddock uh, for the old pits um, on the national layout. Let's take a look at what actually happened when I uh, did a trip to um, my local circuit which is Brands Hatch. I fully charged the car. Um, actually, it said there's five minutes to go, but you can see it's got a range, claimed range of 302. Um, if we just look at the, uh, come over here. Okay, so this area here is where I was driving down to get the trailer. And you can see this is where I hitched the trailer up. Um, so uh, quite an increase in, um, usage in consumption power consumption or energy consumption um, but I have to say that after a while it sort of tends to steady off a bit but it will go higher now we've uh, got the car loaded so I'll try and get a screenshot of this I'm not going to do it while I'm driving obviously but I'll try and get a screenshot of this at some point um, just so we can see a comparison with uh, the energy consumed with the car um, in the back in the trailer actually before we uh we get going i just wanted to show you this this is one of the advantages of an electric car so what was it 500 and whatever pound foot of torque just just watch this i can go as smoothly as i like it just is effortless it just seems as though it, the car doesn't even feel the trailer on the back and bearing in mind i've got 2.2 metric ton of uh, trailer and car on the back of this it's just incredible okay i'm stuck in a queue now to the uh, dartford crossing so i thought i'd just do a quick take of this you can see uh, the average usage uh, you can see there's lots of hills um, that first big hill is the hill from harlow down to the m11 um, it's the the one that actually goes down to the m11 junction um, but uh, yeah the average is pretty good and here we are at the track um, so here's the energy usage it shows the last 30 miles uh, on this chart you can see this last bit um, this was as I said earlier the QE2 crossing then it was okay but then we got into a bit of traffic and there was a bit of stopping and starting and you can see just what impact that has on uh, the range um, which is a bit of a shame this is very very big peak here because there's this really big hill as you come up to the entrance to uh, Brands Hatch circuit and um, that's shown basically there um, you can see the average is 554 watt hours per mile I would say that's pretty that's pretty good um, but that's pretty much what I've been getting if I drive carefully. So I was driving mainly trying to stay at around 55 to 57 miles per hour. Um, and it's taken me an hour and a quarter to get here. So yeah, um, 75 minutes to get here uh, and it's 50 miles. So, you know, you are, you are penalised a bit in terms of the time it takes. Obviously, you'd bear in mind that nearly all of this was motorway. Um, I would have normally probably averaged more like 60 miles an hour, you know, um, by, you know, driving the speed limit. 
Um, so you do give up a bit of time in that way. Um, but as I said at sort of earlier on when I left home with the trailer, the thing you notice is the car doesn't really struggle at all with the trailer. Um, you know, it it just effortlessly pull, pulls it. And the, the best bit about that is if you're manoeuvring it, like because I'm not very good at um, parking the thing yet, I need more practice, but you can just inch inch the trailer and it's n there's absolutely no effort to doing that it's not like i have to you know give it lots of gum and try and make sure that i don't overshoot and yeah so in that way it's um really good here's the journey this time it's um 51 miles um as i said nearly all motorway again or freeway um, just a short bit at the end here which uh, isn't too bad it's uh, there's a bit of dual carriageway then some single carriageway all along here is dual carriageway again obviously because that's the same route as I took for going to Silverstone it's just going a different direction there um, the uh, I, I did the journey and then I, I did the return journey and I didn't have to charge and when I got back I'd got 37 miles left. Now, if we do a quick calculation um, using a battery capacity, a usable battery capacity of 95,000 watt hours, and we divide that by the 554 that you saw in terms of usage uh, in uh, measured in um, watt hours per mile, um, what we get is a, a range of 171 miles. So if you think about this, this is 102 and I had about 37 miles left at the end. So that's about 140. And then I didn't fully charge the car. I think I was about 20 miles short. So that makes it 160. So you can see it's coming up to that 170 mile um, number. So I would say in terms of usable mileage, um, based on this sort of, you know, all the caveats that I've given you before, which is, you know, uh, 50, 55 to 57 miles an hour mostly and mostly motorway, then I think you'd be safe to reckon on a 150 mile range. But obviously you've still got to, if you're going to go further than that, you've got to figure in the charging. So I wanted to talk about the charging next because that obviously is the, the big issue that everybody has. Now, the first issue you have is that, um, as, I, as I indicated earlier, none of the circuits that I've been to have got any charging infrastructure. So you can't charge on site. Um, it's a bit weird when you tell people at the circuit you've got an EV, they sort of say, oh yeah, we had EVs here and the batteries just died all the time, you know, and it's, obviously you're surrounded by petrol heads. It's a bit funny actually, because when I first bought the car, somebody said to me, why on earth did you buy an electric car? And I said, well, because I love the speed. And they said, oh, are they fast then? So I said, yeah, not to 60 in five and a half seconds, which was on my Model S. And um, yeah, so it's a, it's a weird thing that there's a, there are some strange perceptions out there. I guess it's becoming better known now, but you know, anyway, I digress. So uh, let's talk about the charging. So there's no charging at the circuits. I think we can assume that. Some of the charging places like Newport Pagnell South, Southbound, I'll show you that. Here's the services, Newport Pagnell Southbound. The charging is just there, Tesla supercharging. Here's the problem you've got. The first issue is where are you going to put the trailer? Because I, the first time I made a massive mistake and I tried to get the trailer into this car park and boy, did I get in a mess. I had to ask people to move their cars and everything. Obviously the one place you can go is the lorry park. And this is where I would advise you to park your trailer. If you're going to park your trailer at any of the service stations, do it in the lorry park because usually there's a long slot. You can pull in, unhitch the trailer, and you're good. And that's the thing, you've got to unhitch the trailer. It's not like you can pull it up alongside a petrol pump or a diesel pump, you've got to unhitch it. So um, now the problem at Newport Pagnell is if I unhitch it there, there is no way to get back to the Tesla superchargers. 
So if I did charge here, I would have to drive down the motorway to the next junction, which is miles. It's a really long way. And I'd have to come all the way back up the motorway, pull into the uh, supercharger um, station, charge up and then pick up my trailer and carry on. So that is a real pain. So that's one of the issues you have um, at service stations. So it's best if you know the service station. Now, um, going to Silverstone, there's an issue. Um, the charging at Northampton is at this hotel here, Campanile. Um, you can't get the trailer into the car park. So what I did was I drove all the way up here and there's a co-op um, store just here and I parked on this road which is quite wide outside the co-op I unhitched the trailer put the hitch lock on turned the car around came back charged the car up then went back picked up the trailer and the good thing at this site is there's a big uh, drive where they take lorries into the um, to unload uh, to stock up the um, co-op store and I was able to easily reverse into that probably a bit naughty but I did and then pull away and I carried on on my journey then back onto the M1 and I'm away. So some of this is going to take some planning and you can't always assume that you're going to be able to charge at every charging station. You need to figure out the layout of the service station. Uh, I can tell you that South Mims on the junction of the M25 and the A1 that's brilliant. You can go into the um, lorry park. You do have to come out of the site onto a roundabout, but you do a U-turn on the roundabout, come back in, charge the car, go back out, do a U-turn, come back into the lorry park, pick up the trailer. It's pretty easy, but there is a lot of faffing around. You know, it's just one of the things that comes with this. I'm going to come on to talk about uh, towing for longer distances. Um, but before I do that, I just wanted to tell you about a particular problem with the Model X and I'll, I'll demonstrate that um, right here. So you might get this happen to you. Um, so it says I need to authenticate, so I double click, so it says power reduced. I'm just throwing all sorts of errors. You try and authenticate and if you try and drive it, so it says front motor disabled it comes up with um, often it comes up with a thing that says you need a service and if I try to drive uh, let's just uh, put in the yeah it just won't go um, let me just uh, yeah it's it won't even I can't even get it to go into drive and uh, the message is gone now but you'll occasionally see a big red sign that says vehicle about to shut down pull over and um, this symbol up here goes orange sometimes now I've um, the cause of this is my car my car trailer has a winch and the winch has a battery and the battery is charged from the tow car but the Tesla does not like it when the battery is connected. So the simple fix to this is to go inside the um, trailer and disconnect the battery, which I'll show you now. Okay, here you see my winch and here's the battery compartment. And all we have to do is disconnect the battery like that. And uh, that will now fix the problem. Okie dokie, let's see what happens now. I just need to authenticate again. Actually, it's giving the error, but you can see, oh yeah, there you go, all the errors are disappearing now. And uh, you'll see if I just pull it down into drive, there you go, it goes straight into drive and no problem. Because it's gonna be a nuisance to uh, connect and disconnect the battery, particularly if I, you know, I may have to use the winch. I don't wanna to have to keep messing around with battery connections what I plan to do is put a switch into the charging circuit so it's a problem with the uh, charging circuit um, as it comes from the um, plug you know where it plugs into the Tesla 
you may get this problem, I guess, with um, caravans, because if you've got something like a battery driving a fridge or something like that, I could see how you could get the problem. Um, the, now, the weird thing, and this is something you, you need to be aware of, is if the battery is fully charged, it drives perfectly and you don't get a problem, which is like uh, lulls you into a false sense of security. Then you, you use the lights inside the trailer, which is one of the things I do occasionally if I'm packing it up late at night, and that runs the battery down a bit and then you start to get the problems. So uh, it's, it seemed very random initially until we found out that this was the cause. I'm racing this weekend at Brands Hatch, so um, you saw that I was able to get there and back on a single charge. That's not a problem. The next race is at Croft. Croft is right up here near Darlington. Uh, 226 miles, as you can see. Uh, so it's definitely going to be at least one charge. But unfortunately, I think it's going to be two charges because we'll be staying in Darlington and driving to the Croft circuit. So there'll be a certain amount of backwards and forwards because I plan to do testing on Friday and then I think the race is on Saturday. So there's going to be some driving around. That would mean two charges on the way back. If I get lucky, then that's an additional two hours on my journey, on a th three hour journey. If I get unlucky and I have to wait for a charger, you could be looking at another three or four hours. So instead of doing that, I'm going to hire a truck which is a bit of bit demoralizing, but realistically, I think that's the only answer here. So just to summarize here, um, EV, or certainly the um, Tesla Model X, is a great vehicle for towing um, because of that um, torque, you know, is, it's really good. A um, 100 kilowatt hour battery will probably get you about 150 miles. Um, you need to calibrate this yourself because I'm sort of right on the edge here of, I think, of how far it will go. You can extend the mileage quite considerably by lowering the, lowering the speed. I didn't touch on it during the rest of this video, but if you if I went from 57 down to, say, 40 miles an hour because I was running short on charge, the um, consumption goes down considerably. And I think that's because... Um, I'm right in saying that um, because of uh, rolling friction and air friction increases, at, I think it's the square of the speed, um, then, uh, you know, a, a drop in speed has a considerable effect. Um, charging requires unhitching. So you need to charge, you need to plan your charges um, very carefully. Are you going to be able to unhitch at the uh, charging station? Um, how easy is it going to be to do that and to get the um, car hitched back up to the trailer or the trailer hitched back up to the car? Um, and obviously all of this, it means the journey is going to take longer. And that's something you have to consider, not just because of the lower speed, but also because of the um, time taken to charge and the time it's going to take you to unhitch and hitch the trailer. And finally, downplating um, the uh, procedure in the UK where you change the weight, uh, the plate weight of a trailer to match the towing vehicle. Um, downplating is not needed for these sorts of trailers. So I hope you found all that useful and I look forward to speaking to you on another subject.